Welcome to our festive nativity. Now let's meet our friends who are going to help us journey through our very festive Christmas story. We have our angelic angel. La la la. The super shepherd boy. While shepherds watch their flocks by night. The marvellous Mary. Hello, I'm Mary, just in case you're wondering. Yes, I did know. Our main character, the fantastic Freston Fred. I love Christmas. The mega mum. He's not joking, he really does love Christmas. He's a carpenter, so he must be feeling top of the world. It's the joyful Joseph. I am Joseph, I do lots of emotions. Are we sitting comfortably? Are we feeling festive? We are ready to find out how festive Fred is and what's so great about the greatest gift he finds. But first, let's pray. O wisdom of our God most high, guiding creation with power and love, come to teach us the path of knowledge. Amen. One day there lived a boy who loved Christmas. I mean he loved it with a capital L-O-V-E. He loved Christmas so much, he'd sing jingle bells in the shower, eat mince pies for breakfast, and watch Christmas movies in the summer holidays. Why do you love Christmas so much, Fred? <laughs> Sighed Mum, the frustration of the name Fred was beginning to stick. It's the best, Mum. We do a big shop, we get lots of treats. Dad drives for ages to get the biggest tree. We put on our pyjamas and watch festive films too. And on Christmas Day, there's our gifts just for me. Said Fred as he waved around his Christmas list and pointed to the supercharged Max 3000. Well, I know you love Christmas, well, but what about the very fast Christmas? The very fast? Pondered Fred. Yes, the nativity in Bethlehem. The, remember you were in it last year? I definitely wasn't in Bethlehem. I'd remember that. Well, no, you weren't in the nativity story. That was 3,000 miles away and 2,000 years ago. But you did play a shepherd in your school nativity play. Oh, yeah. I was the shepherd. I really wanted to... Be frank or spent and go have gold. Mmm, you mean the wise man who gave mirth, frankincense and gold? Exactly. Said Fred as he thought about the supercharged Max 3000, but in gold. You know there's more th to the story than gift, Fred. In fact, it's a story about the greatest gift. Picture the scene, Fred. There are shepherds watching the flocks by night. And his mum began to tell the story. Fred was getting a little snoozy. He closed his eyes to picture of the shepherds and their sheep. One by one, he started counting them and then... O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, Come to rescue us with your mighty power. 2,000 years ago, somewhere near Bethlehem. Ow, it's my head, said Fred, as all of a sudden he awoke. Oops, are you okay? It looked like you nodded off and hit your head. The shepherd boy said, uh, where am I? That's a silly question. You're in a field. But what do you Asked Fred, wondering if he went wandering into his neighbour's field again. Only the bestest field with the bestest sheep in the whole of Bethlehem. Ba ba Bethlehem? Fumbled a flabbergasted Fred as he was pretty sure he was sat at home in Mill Hill five seconds ago. Wait, you're actually a sh sh shepherd from a na na nativity? Started Fred squeezing the boy's arm to make sure he was real. Get off of me! <laughs> 
Fred couldn't believe it. He was 3,000 miles and 2,000 years away from home. But before Fred could think back to his school nativity play and remember what happened next, there appeared an angel in the sky. Root of Jesse's stem, sign of God's love for all his people, come to save us without delay. Glory to God! Glory to God! The angel was more terrific and tremendous than Fred had ever imagined, shining so bright and definitely no angel in sight. Don't be afraid, it's good news about the greatest gift for everybody. The angel wasn't talking about the supercharged Max 3000. He was talking about a newborn baby, God's own son and the greatest gift ever. Don't be afraid! Someone who's come to rescue us from the messy things that hurt us and to forgive us for the mean things we do to others. It's in you! Suddenly, the angel was joined by what seemed like a bajillion angels, all singing in perfect harmony. Glory to God! Fred thought Chi Chi's solo of Silent Night was good, but this was the greatest sound he had ever heard. Larry the dog. <coughs> Larry the dog. But it wasn't anywhere near as good as what was waiting for them in a manger. Fred sped through the mud, jumped over rocks and slipped over streams until they finally arrived at the downstairs part of the house. Now Fred and the shepherd boy have arrived at the old stone house and we're about to go in. Nervously, Fred and the shepherd boy opened the door and before their very eyes were Mary, Joseph and precious baby Jesus tucked in tight, resting his head on the pillow of straw. Well, hello you two. Then Mary was smile beaming from ear to ear. I think somebody wants to say hello. Added Joseph, nodding to the boys to get a closer look of Jesus. And as they approached, they saw the baby Jesus. Whispered the boys as they both knelt before Jesus in pure wonder. O key of David, opening the gates of God's eternal kingdom, come and free the prisoners of darkness. Amen. I didn't know, but you really are the most special somebody, aren't you? He's the greatest gift ever. Would you like to hold him? Ask Mary. Me? No way. I'm too messy to hold the greatest gift in history. He's not afraid of messy things because he, he came to fix our messy things. Then Fred and the shepherd remembered what the angel had said. Jesus came to rescue us from the messy things that hurt us and forgive us for the mean things we do to others. But how? He's just a baby. Not just any baby. He's God's own son. And one day he'll grow up and show us how. But I don't feel like I deserve it. Then Fred and the shepherd remembered what the angel had said. Jesus came to rescue us from the messy things that hurt us and forgive us for the mean things we do to others. Well, it wouldn't be a gift. She did. Put it. Said Joseph with a smile. Wow, that's way better than the supercharged 3000. Well, I can't keep it to myself any longer. The shepherd boy said as he slept to his feet, hopped past the manger and sped out through the creaky old door, telling everyone about the greatest gift ever. Wait for me! <laughs> said Fred as he hopped and sped, but then tripped by the door and fell on his head. A radiant dawn, splendour of eternal light, sun of justice, come and shine on those who dwell in the darkness and in the shadow of death. Amen. All of a sudden, Fred opened his eyes and he was back home as mom was just finishing the story. And that's the story of the very first Christmas, the end. Wow, mom, that was the best thing ever. O oh, King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. 
Amen. Have you bumped your head, Fred? Um, why did you ask, Tom? Well, I know I tell good stories, but this time you are captivated. I think someone might just be getting the supercharged Max 3000 after all. Thanks, Mum. That would be brilliant. But I can think of an even better gift this Christmas. The one who came to rescue us from our messy things. In fact, he's the greatest gift ever. Said Fred, let's pray together. Whether you're watching online or you're here in our church building today, I hope that you've enjoyed the Mill East Church Christmas Nativity. It has been great to celebrate the story together in this way. And you might have noticed that there were two parts. First of all, we had our kids and young people giving some of the best acting performances I think I have seen. Thank you so much to everyone who took part. You've really helped us remember the story behind the celebration. The second part was a series of prayers read out by some of our older church members. These prayers are called the O Antiphons, and they're another ancient Christian tradition used to celebrate Christmas. They remind us of three things. The first thing they remind us of is that Jesus came not at the end or the beginning of the story, but in the middle of God's story. That he was the one in whom all the stories of the people of God pointed to and found their fulfillment. And I hope that this Christmas you find that your story finds its fulfillment in Jesus too. The second part of these prayers contains one of the names given to Jesus from the Bible. They're, they're rich, profound names that inspire us. And, and I hope that you too are inspired to know who Jesus is this day and always. But the third part of each one of these prayers is a call to action. God, would you come and meet us? I don't know what your needs are today. Whether you need to exchange some slightly dodgy presents you received this morning, whether you need to nip to the shops to get some batteries to make something work that you were given, whether you need to, to remember to send a thank you card to someone. But we live in a world that is full of need, particularly this Christmas. It feels like there is conflict and difficulty all around us. We know of families who are struggling of countries torn apart by war and violence. And yet, as Christians, we believe that one of the profound truths of the Christmas message is that Jesus was God's response to the needs of our world. And so each of the O Antiphon prayers, these, these great ancient prayers of the church, carries with it a call to God to come and change us. And that is my prayer for you this year, that you wouldn't just celebrate Christmas, but as you remember that Jesus came to show you the love of God, you would be changed by it too. Our final prayer is this. O oh, Emmanuel, our King and our Lawgiver, the hope of the nations and their Saviour, come and save us, O oh Lord our God. Oh! Sing.
Sacred infants, all divine, what a tender love was thine, thus to come from highest bliss down to such a world as this. Hail, thou ever blessed one.